it is very fitting to begin this exhibit with a painting by Degas as an introduction to American Impressionism. Because like many French intellectuals and writers, as well as artists, before him and after him, Degas came to America and this visit shaped his career. And many historians have written about it and in fact pointed to the deep connections between Degas' French paintings and his American paintings. So in late 1872, Degas came to New Orleans and during his stay, he painted a cotton office in New Orleans. Now this painting was a turning point in his career and the history of Impressionism. He showed it in 1876 in Paris at the second Impressionist show, and it was in fact the first of Degas' paintings to be sold to a museum two years later, and the first one to be sold by an Impressionist to a museum. So this visit indeed, and this painting, really made a difference to who we know of Degas. So he came to New Orleans and his visit lasted four months. And it was really his only experience in America. But this visit was not an accident, nor just tourism. In fact, he still had family in New Orleans. New Orleans was his mother, Marie Celestine Musson's native city. So he traveled to visit the Musson family. And during his stay, he stayed with his uncle, Michael Musson and his three daughters. Now the painting, The Cotton Exchange, portrayed his uncle's brokerage business, cotton brokerage business. And it's important to remember that cotton was in fact the 19th century most significant global commodity. And much of Europe's supply came from the American South. So much of the cotton that you see in all of Degas' paintings, in laundresses and in other paintings, was most likely Southern cotton. Now again, another interesting uh, connection is that because of their business, the Degas and Mousson families had ties to the Confederacy and to what a historian has called post-bellum racial politics in New Orleans. Michael Mousson, served in the Confederate army and owned a number of slaves. And Degas never acknowledged the legacy of slavery in his work or personal life, nor did he ever mention the labor of enslaved people on which the cotton trade and his family's wealth was built. So this particular painting, The Cotton Office, was an indirect commentary on what was Degas' long life interests. Now, this historian, Michel Faux, has astutely noted that Degas had a career long obsession with the composition of the world around him. And it's not a coincidence that he portrayed the world of cotton business. Degas was always a passionate collector of fabrics. He especially of the fabrics that made up Parisians' intimate daily material environments. In his home, he had a collection of women's kerchiefs and bonnets that he put on display for him and his visitors to enjoy. And his love of fabric also shaped the subjects that he painted, the laundresses, the ballet dancers, and the bathers in intimate settings. Now, one contemporary understood that well, Jules Clarity, and he explained of Degas' paintings of ballet dancers that, and these are his words, these women deserve to have a special painter in love with the white gauze of their, her shorts, with the silk of her stockings, with the pin note of her satin shoes. And Degas himself said, of the laundresses he painted, like the one that opens the exhibit, that everything is beautiful in this world of the people, but one Paris laundry girl with her bare arms is worth it all for such a pronounced Parisian as I am. 
So we can see Daguerre's obsessions on display in a painting he completed in 1872, just before his trip to America, the dance class at the opera on the Rue Le Pelletier. And of course, Daguerre was fond of painting ballet dancers and opera singers like this one, the world of performance that he rendered in intimate ways, as intimate as his bathers and his laundresses. But the cotton office shares its composition strikingly with the painting of the dance class. Now, at the same time, the cotton office was unusual because it departed from much of what Daguerre chose to portray during his stay, namely a world that was familiar and intimate to him that of his female cousins and children and other women of the domestic sphere, as he was fond of always painting women. Now, as Michel Foire has explained, the paintings done during his stay in New Orleans, and I, I quote her, reflect his newfound interest in the circulation of people, communications, and raw materials around the world, and in the transportation technology that linked distant places and population. Now, Duguay's uncle business ultimately went bankrupt a few years later. But those paintings in that stay in America allowed him to become the recognized artist that we know, and it illustrates the enduring ties that have existed between France and America. And just as Duguay traveled to the United States, many American Impressionists travel to France or to meet other Impressionists, like John Singer Sargent, who wanted to meet Monet, or like Mary Cassatt, who is featured in this exhibit and who went in 1874 to Paris and stayed there. But this exhibit is a reminder of the cross-pollinations and conversations that have existed between French and American artists.